Number 10. The X-Men comics were created by writer Stan Lee and artist Jack Kirby. The first issue of X-Men was published by Marvel Comics in September 1963. The original lineup of the X-Men consisted of Cyclops, Scott Summers, the team leader, known for his optic blasts emitted from his eyes, Marvel Girl, Jean Grey, possessing telekinetic and telepathic abilities, Angel, Warren Worthington III, with large feathered wings that grant him flight, Beast, Henry McCoy, initially portrayed as agile and possessing enhanced physical abilities, later gaining a more bestial appearance. Iceman, Bobby Drake, capable of generating and manipulating ice. These characters formed the core team of the X-Men under the guidance of Professor Charles Xavier, also known as Professor X, who mentored and trained them in the use of their powers for the betterment of mutant kind and humanity. Number 9. The X-Men comic series faced the possibility of cancellation in its early years due to low sales. After its initial run from 1963 to 1970, the series went into reprint mode, with no new issues being produced for several years. However, in 1975, writer Lynn Wine and artist Dave Cockrum revived the series with Giant Size X-Men No. 1, introducing a new international team of mutants led by Wolverine and including characters like Storm, Nightcrawler, and Colossus. This relaunch revitalized the X-Men franchise and set the stage for its eventual success and popularity. Number 8. The X-Men series experienced a relaunch in the 1970s with the publication of Giant Size X-Men, number 1 in 1975. This issue marked a significant shift for the series introducing new characters and revitalizing interest in the X-Men franchise. Written by Lynn Wine and illustrated by Dave Cockrum, Giant Size X-Men. Number one featured the debut of a new international team of mutants, including Wolverine, Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, and Thunderbird. Number seven. The Danger Room is an advanced holographic simulation room located in the X-Mansion the headquarters of the X-Men. It is designed to provide training scenarios for the X-Men, allowing them to practice their combat skills, test their powers, and prepare for various threats they may face in the field. The Danger Room is equipped with sophisticated technology that can generate lifelike holographic simulations of enemies, environments, and scenarios. It can simulate a wide range of settings, from urban landscapes to alien worlds, and create virtual opponents with varying levels of difficulty. Throughout the history of the X-Men comics, the Danger Room has been a central element of the team's training regimen, often serving as a backdrop for action-packed sequences and character development. It has also been featured in various adaptations of the X-Men in other media, including animated series, films, and video games. Number 6 the X-Men's primary mode of aerial transportation is known as the Blackbird, also referred to as the X-Jet. The Blackbird is a high-tech, supersonic jet designed by the mutant genius Forge, with input from other members of the X-Men, such as Hank McCoy, Beast. It is equipped with advanced technology and defensive systems, making it capable of traveling at high speeds and maneuvering through various environments, including outer space. The Blackbird serves as the X-Men's primary means of transportation when traveling long distances or undertaking missions that require rapid deployment. It is often depicted as sleek and black in appearance. In addition to its speed and agility, the Blackbird is equipped with various defensive measures to protect the X-Men and their allies during missions. These include advanced sensors, stealth capabilities, and weapon systems designed to fend off hostile threats. Number 5. The X-Men have faced numerous villains throughout their long history in Marvel Comics. Some of the most notable adversaries include Magneto, perhaps the most iconic X-Men villain. Magneto possesses the ability to manipulate magnetic fields and is the leader of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. He often serves as a foil to Professor X's dream of peaceful coexistence between mutants and humans. Apocalypse an ancient mutant with a godlike appearance and vast powers, Apocalypse is obsessed with the concept of survival of the fittest 
and seeks to bring about the evolution of mutant kind through conflict and destruction. The Sentinels, giant robots created to hunt and capture mutants. The Sentinels are a constant threat to the X-Men and other mutants. They are often depicted as relentless and highly advanced machines programmed to exterminate mutants. Mr. Sinister, a geneticist obsessed with the study of mutant genetics, Mr. Sinister is a master manipulator who often orchestrates complex schemes to further his own goals. He has been a recurring antagonist for the X-Men for many years. The Hellfire Club, a secret society composed of wealthy and influential individuals, the Hellfire Club has clashed with the X-Men on multiple occasions. Led by figures such as Sebastian Shaw and Emma Frost, the Hellfire Club seeks power and influence through political and economic means. The Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, a group of mutant extremists led by Magneto, the Brotherhood opposes the X-Men's vision of peaceful coexistence and advocates for mutant supremacy. Its members often include powerful mutants with dangerous abilities. The Dark Phoenix, when Jean Grey's powers become corrupted by the cosmic entity known as the Phoenix Force, she transforms into the Dark Phoenix, a destructive force of nature capable of vast destruction. The Dark Phoenix saga is one of the most iconic storylines in X-Men history. These are just a few examples of the many villains the X-Men have faced over the years. The team's rogues gallery is diverse and includes a wide range of adversaries with unique abilities and motivations. Number 4. The Doom Patrol made their debut in My Greatest Adventure No. 80, which was published by DC Comics in June 1963. The X-Men, created by writer Stan Lee and artist Jack Kirby, first appeared in X-Men No. 1, published by Marvel Comics in September 1963. Therefore, the Doom Patrol technically appeared in comics first, predating the X-Men by a few months. I hope you're enjoying this video. Before we get to the top three, please could you take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel as it would be a great help. Number three. There has been a lot of members on the X-Men team over the years. Here are some of the other main members. Polaris, Havoc, Banshee, Sunfire, Kitty Pride, Rogue, Gambit, Bishop, Longshot, Psylocke, Dazzler, Forge, Jubilee, The White Queen, Zorn, and many more. Number 2. In the Marvel Universe, mutants are often categorized based on their level of power, potential, or threat. While these classifications may vary depending on the storyline or context, here are some general categories. Omega Level Mutants These are mutants with the highest level of power, often possessing abilities that can affect reality on a large scale or manipulate fundamental forces. Examples include Jean Grey, Phoenix, Franklin Richards, and Legion. Alpha Level Mutants These mutants have significant powers that make them formidable, but they may not have the reality-altering abilities of Omega Level Mutants. Examples include Magneto, Iceman, and Storm. Beta Level Mutants These mutants have powers that are above average, but not as potent as Alpha or Omega Level Mutants. They can still be powerful and play important roles in various storylines. Examples include Cyclops, Rogue, and Colossus. Gamma Level Mutants This term is less commonly used but may refer to mutants with powers considered below beta level, possibly with limitations or less versatility in their abilities. Depowered Mutants these are individuals who were once mutants but lost their powers due to various reasons, such as the effects of the decimation event or other storylines. These classifications are not always rigid, and mutants may move between categories based on character development, story arcs, or retcons within the Marvel Universe. Number 1. Several spin off teams have emerged from the X Men comics over the years each featuring different combinations of mutant characters and often exploring specific themes or storylines. Some notable spin-off teams include X-Factor, originally formed by the original X-Men members who left to pursue independent superhero work. It has had various iterations and rosters over the years, including government-sanctioned mutant teams and private detective agencies. New Mutants, initially introduced as a group of young mutants enrolled at Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, the New Mutants have gone on to become a team of their own, 
often dealing with more personal and coming-of-age storylines. Excalibur, a British-based team consisting of mutants and other super-powered individuals, including former X-Men members Nightcrawler and Kitty Pride. They often deal with mystical and extra-dimensional threats. X-Force, a more militant and proactive team formed to tackle threats that the X-Men cannot handle through traditional means. It has had various incarnations, ranging from black ops teams to more public superhero squads. Generation X, another team of young mutants mentored by former X-Men members, including Banshee and Emma Frost. They operate as a training squad for the next generation of mutant heroes. X-Men Blue and X-Men Gold These two teams were formed as part of the Reserzian relaunch of the X-Men comics, with each team featuring a mix of classic and newer X-Men characters. X-Men Red Another team formed as part of the Reserzian relaunch, led by Jean Grey, and focused on proactive efforts to improve human-mutant relations and address global threats. These are just a few examples, and there have been many other spin-off teams and solo series featuring X-Men characters over the years, showcasing the diversity and depth of the mutant corner of the Marvel Universe. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from the video and we'll see you on the next one.